Hello, my front porch friend. Oh, it's good to be with you tonight. I have been traveling all day long. In fact, I just got in just a bit ago. And to be just really honest with you, I feel about like I look. Just a bit on the worn side. But I've had you on my heart. And I've just been leaning in to listen to what the Lord wants to share with you tonight. Well, first of all, I want us to remind each other of the word that we are claiming for the month of December. Remember, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This is the promise that you and I have taken as our word that we are standing on for everything that we are believing this month that in the natural looks impossible. It came out of, remember, Luke 1, 37. It's, it's the promise that the angel gave, gave to Mary. Whenever she received a promise that in the natural was impossible, a circumstance impossible, she's going to bear a son, though she's never known a man. And when she asked how, remember, the angel says, Mary, with God, nothing will be impossible. And I believe right there, that word is so much to you. You can put your name right there and let God call your name and say to you directly right now, with God, nothing is impossible. And we're staking our claim on that word for this whole month, believing God for miracles during this holiday season. Now, this next word that I'm wanting to share comes literally from the t-shirt that I talked about just a couple of posts earlier. The t-shirt that says, it will be as God has said. Whoa, two amazing promises that God has given us to hold on to for what we are believing for. With God, nothing is impossible and it will be as God has said. And that word was so alive in me tonight that I just went back and searched and I found the time that I shared that particular post with you. It was about a year ago, I think. And I shared this word from the book of Acts. And it was so alive even when I watched it back because that's what I heard for you tonight, that you're to go back and watch this again one more time toward the end of the, this post I have a special guest that you love, and she's going to share a dream and really just this, a prophetic word and declaration for you to hold on to for this season, all right? I love you, my friend. I want you to watch this tonight. Comment below. Let me know what you need. Let me know what you're believing for. Let me know that you're there and praying for me too. I love you so much, and I will talk to you soon. Be blessed. Hello, my front porch friend. Well, today the sun's going down and I think it may be a little bit too cold to wander too far from the house, but oh, we've got a, we've got a visitor. He's coming up to just say hello to you, Palmer. You wanna speak to our friends, don't you? All the front porch friends, you wanna say hello, buddy? There he is. He's very, very happy to be alive today. So <laughs> I'm hoping that we can talk with Palmer wandering around, but anyway, there he is tearing up my yard. But as I've been listening to the Lord for you over these past couple of days, just hearing this word, and I'm amazed at how God speaks. I'm amazed. So loud and so clear and so often. And I can't even imagine. I cannot imagine living my life without being led by that voice. His word for you and for me that live on this front porch right here of intercession, his word is everything. It's everything. So come over here on the swing because I want us to talk about what I've heard to tell you. So the word that I have from the Lord for somebody watching right now is to encourage your faith, to hold on, to hold on to every promise that God has given you, no matter what it looks like. And the word came from something I read, actually, in the book of Acts. It's in the 27th chapter. Well, actually, it begins before that, because it's concerning our brother, the Apostle Paul, who was actually, it starts off in this particular story. He's in Jerusalem, and he's been preaching in Jerusalem, and he's got himself into a mess of trouble. So while he's preaching, let me just back up right here to, to chapter 23. He, it, his preaching lands him in prison again. And the Bible says that while Paul, now listen to me good for your word. 
while Paul is in prison. It says here in verse 11 of chapter 23. No, Palmer. In, in verse 11 of chapter 23. Now, hold on. Let me get my Bible from Palmer. Lord, help us all. Palmer, get away, buddy. I've got to, I've got to deliver the word. And right now, don't be a hindrance. <laughs> Stay with me, all right? The Bible says in verse 11, That night, the Lord appeared to Paul. And he said to Paul, now listen to this. Oh, I'm just going to hold it up for you to look at. It says here, can you see it? It says, be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a real heavy verse right there, but it's loaded. Number one, just the fact that he's sitting in prison and, and the Lord comes to Paul and he's just looking at Paul sitting in these horrible circumstances like he's looking at some of you right now sitting in the middle of horrible circumstances. And, and the Lord is saying to Paul, basically, cheer up, Paul, be encouraged. And, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing by far here. The Lord's basically saying, be encouraged, Paul. I'm at work. Because the same way that you've been preaching in Jerusalem, you're going to preach it in Rome as well. Now, Paul was going to need that word because it had to do with the journey and the promise of where he was going. God had an assignment for Paul in Rome. All right. And Paul was going to need a word to hold on to that was going to get him to Rome. Because it wasn't just the circumstances going to get him wrong. Paul had to have a word to get him to the place that God wanted him to be. Come on, it's going to take, a, it's going to take more than a boat to get him there. It was going to take a word to get him there. And notice this, as soon as the word is delivered, because I think sometimes even the enemy, because he, he can't read our minds. The enemy himself has to listen to, this, to what is being said around us. Because sometimes as soon as we receive a promise from God, if you'll notice, when you get a promise, sometimes things get worse instead of better. All right? So Paul gets this promise. He's already just been going through all this stuff. But as soon as Paul gets this promise from God, not only are you going to Jerusalem, Paul, you're going to Rome too. As soon as he gets this word and you're going to preach for me there, well, the enemy goes to work too to stop him from going to Rome because the enemy wants to keep you from everything that God has promised and told you that you're going to have and told you where you're going to be and, and, and your assignment and your calling. So the enemy wants to stop that from happening because the enemy knows that you carry in you the promises of God that's going to change people's lives and advance God's kingdom in the earth. So the enemy went to work to stop the word from being to, from coming to pass for Paul. So what happens is, as soon as Paul gets the word, it gets it, he was it was already going through a lot, but now it gets worse instead of better. But see, the deal is, Paul could have just given up and said, "This ain't working." I, don't, I know God said I'm going to Rome, but this ain't working. So the next thing he knows, he's he's standing before trial. He's he's being he's beaten. He's and now then he's put on a ship. Thankfully, that ship that was headed for Rome. Now, he could have sort of gotten excited here because it looked like things were going to get a little bit better for the moment. But as soon as Paul gets on the ship and begins to head toward his promise that it looks like things are going to get better, it got far worse. And this horrible storm breaks out. You and I have talked about this a little bit before, but just follow me and listen with fresh ears today what God has got to tell you. So this storm breaks out. And, and so you need to go read the whole thing for yourself today after we get through. You need to go read in chapter 27, the whole chapter of the book of Acts. So the Bible says, while they're, you know, they, even, even after they were just getting started on this journey on the boat, Paul tells them, listen, I, got the, I don't feel good about this. I just feel like there's, there's going to be trouble ahead if we, if, we, if we go the way we're going. Well, they, these men that were with him didn't listen. They head out on the ship. The storm comes, and you need to read what the Bible says. In fact, it says in verse 18, the next day, now this is after they've already been in this storm for a long time. It says, the next day, as gale force winds continue to batter the ship, just like for some of you, your, your marriage is being battered. The relationship with your children has been battered. Your finances your job situation, 
your health, your mind, just holding on to your mind and your faith. You just feel like it's being battered by the storms of this life. That's where Paul was too. The next day, the gale force winds continued to batter the ship. And the crew began throwing things overboard. There's a whole new message there. We ain't got time for it. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. Watch this. The terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars. Now listen to this. Until at last, all hope was gone. Until at last, all hope was gone. If some of you have felt like lately you've been fighting to just keep believing that there could be any change in this situation, you just feel like your life has been so battered, your faith has been so battered, till lately it just feels like out of sheer exhaustion, mental exhaustion, physical, spiritual exhaustion, it just feels like hope is gone. Watch. He says, finally, no one has eaten for a long time. And finally, Paul calls the crew together and listen to this. He says, men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all the damage and loss. But here is your word, my sweet front porch friend. Paul said in verse 22, but take courage. In other words, be encouraged. In other words, whoa, I think Paul had heard those words somewhere else, hadn't he? Because just a few days before he got on this ship, the, the Lord spoke to Paul and he said, Paul, you be encouraged. You're going to Rome. So whenever you receive encouragement, honey, that you believe you can give encouragement. So Paul is looking here at these men who are, who have completely ignored the warnings of the Lord. And now then he's becoming the encourager, just like you are. And so he's received encouragement so he can give encouragement. Paul looks at those men and he says, men, you should have listened to me, but be encouraged anyway. He says, for last night, an angel of the God, I love this, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paul said, because just last night, an angel of the Lord, of the God that I belong to and the God I serve stood before me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul. Watch this. For you will surely stand before Caesar. I love those words. Remember those words, honey. You will surely. Remember that. You will surely. You will surely stand before Caesar. And what's more, the angel said, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone selling with you. So take courage, Paul said, for I believe God and it will be just as he said. <laughs> Look at those words, honey. Look at those words. Paul said, for I believe God. I believe God. It's going to be just as he said. That's your word today from the Lord. Your word from the Lord is to encourage you that in the middle of the storm, when your faith has been battered, the Lord is telling you today, you need to be encouraged. Come on. I know you say, easy to say, Karen. How do I do that? Just receive the words. And even if you don't feel anything, just say out loud right now, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged not because I see one thing changing. I'm encouraged not because things look or sound different or because I even feel different. I'm encouraged because God told me to be. I'm encouraged because I believe the word. And I believe that that word came from the same God that Paul served. And Paul said he's the God to whom I belong and the God to whom I serve. Come on. And you can say that this day, on this day, on this front porch, the God to whom I belong and the God to whom I serve told me to be encouraged. So right now you just start saying out loud, I'm encouraged. I'm not discouraged by what I see in the storm I'm in. I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged. 
And while I see everybody else throwing stuff overboard and about to jump off the ship and dive in and look for the, for the lifeboat. And while everybody else is jumping off and throwing the stuff overboard, I'm standing right here and I'm believing the God in whom I serve, that his word is true. I'm going to be encouraged. Now watch. He said this, don't be afraid. You will surely stand before Caesar. In other words, God said, Paul, even though you're in the middle of the storm of your life and there's no hope left in anybody around you right now, Paul, you will surely go to Rome. Why? Because I said so. I told you days ago, Paul, you're going to Rome. So you will surely Come on, it reminds me of what God told me, and I've told you about it many times. Whenever God took, took me to Prayer Mountain years ago, when it just looked like my daughter, Lindsay, that was the prodigal then, and it just looked like all hope was lost, and people were just telling me to let it go and give it up. And I went to Prayer Mountain, and I said, God, is this the way it's going to be? Will this be is this how it's going to end? And God told me then to go to 1 Samuel and go to Ziglag with David. And when David was facing his enemies in a burned Ziglag, and his wife and his children had been taken captive, and God, David goes to God and he says, do I go after these enemies that's taken my children or not, God? And I love what God told David. He says, David, go after them. Watch, because you will surely recover everything that the enemy's taken from you, David. In other words, you will surely recover it, David. It's sure to happen. Why? Because I said so. Because God said so. Because God said so. Because that's your word today. You will surely go to Rome, Paul. I know the storm is raging. The ship's falling apart. The people have given up. There's no hope anymore. But I said, Paul, you're going to Rome. So you will surely stand before Caesar. Paul had a word. You've got a word. You've got a word, honey. You just got to remember what he said when the storm is raging hard. Don't forget your promise. So Paul tells them, and I love this right here. Paul said, this angel of the Lord came to me and said, don't be afraid. You're going to stand before Caesar. And I love this sentence for you. What, she, what, the, what, the, what the Lord told Paul. He, the angel said, what's more, Paul? God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. Isn't that beautiful? Paul, even these men unbelieving and disobedient, even these men that didn't do what God said to do, they're even going to be saved too because of your faith, Paul. You know what that means? I know in your life right now, in, the sh in your ship, so to speak, the ship of your life, of your home, it may look like everybody else on that ship and your whole family, nobody else even believes they're just in the storm with you. Your children, maybe your, maybe your close family and friends, and maybe your spouse doesn't even believe at all. Maybe nobody else has hope that this is going to change. Maybe nobody else can even believe that your daughter is going to be different or that your son is going to be set free. Maybe everybody else is telling you to give it up. Give up and just accept who they are, what they say they are. Give up. Just just let them go. Let them go. You're trying to hold on to let them, just people telling you, just let, let them go. Just let them go be who they want to be. Just just accept it. Or maybe they're telling you, just you're just gonna have to give up on your marriage. Just throw all this, throw your marriage overboard. Throw, throw your faith overboard in the storm. Come on, throw your hope overboard. Come on, people telling you that. Because nobody else in your ship even believes. But honey. When there's one person that's still believing what God said, it's enough. Come on, God said, because of you, Paul, everybody else on the ship, all these unbelieving sailors that already disobeyed me, don't have any hope in them, they're going to be saved too, Paul, because of you. Because, Paul, you're going to Rome. Now look what else he said, the last thing. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. So take courage, Paul said in verse 25. For I believe God, and it will be just as he said. Paul said, men, I believe what God said. I'm going to Rome. God said that. God said to me that we're going to be saved, and it will be as he has said. He said that in the middle of the storm. The storm had not ceased. It wasn't like everything got nice and everything got calmed down and they saw all and a hoe and they were not all, you know, feeling all better. And then God, Paul came back and said, you know, I always, I always believed it was good. No, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the hopelessness, Paul said, 
I'm encouraged. Why am I encouraged? Because I've got a word and it will be as God has said. Honey, today in your life, when you've got a promise, honey, you hold to that promise through the storm. Hold on with everything you've got and receive the encouragement of the Lord. He is faithful to keep his word. The God to whom we belong and the God to whom we serve has never broken his promises. Never. All he needs is somebody like Paul and like you and me that says, I believe the word. Now, I've got somebody I want you to meet. Stay with me right here, okay? I've got a friend in this house. And I, she has a word. She had a dream just in the last few days. And this dream confirms what we have said. And it is a word for you. I think you know this lady already. So come in the house. She's in here waiting on me while I've been on the front porch preaching. I called her over here and said, you got to come in here and just wait to my, for my front porch friends because I've got a word. So come in the house where it's much warmer, actually. And Miss Pam Barnett, <laughs> come over. Come over here, sweetheart. Right. Miss Pam Barnett. Now, y'all have got my book, right? Pam, come sit down. Me and okay. her is going to try to share the chair. Okay. Pam, sit down in the chair, All and right. you make room for me. You, you get on that side. Yeah, okay. that's my. this is my better side. side right here. Okay. Pam Barnett <laughs> is the lady in my book, Watching the Road, with a, that I wrote about. Remember her? And if you've read my book, which I hope you have, called Watching the Road, I write about Pam because she's the intercessor. Now, Pam is intercessor extraordinaire. <laughs> All right. So this is a woman that whenever I need prayer, she's the lady I call Pam and my mother. <laughs> Pam and my mother. So, Pam, I was telling you that you had a dream this the last yeah. few days. Yes. Mm -hmm. That in that dream, yeah. it's a word from the Lord that confirms the word we've been sharing. Yes. And it's a word that I believe is going to speak to them. So I want Pam to tell you the dream. So listen, listen. Okay, okay. go, Pam. Yes. Um, in the dream, I was with Karen somewhere, and she was speaking, and she had just finished, and she had come off the stage, and we were standing on the side of the stage with a couple of other people, and we heard the news that something we had been praying for for a very long time had been answered. So we are shouting, we are rejoicing. We're, there's just so much joy. We're crying, we're laughing, we're praising, we're dancing. I mean, we were having a time. And I was so excited about this news. I wanted everyone to know that this had come to pass. So I ran up on the stage and I grabbed a microphone and I just started shouting to the top of my lungs. It was just as the Lord had said. It was just as the Lord had said. It Hallelujah. was just as the Lord had said. <laughs> I kept shouting that over and over and I was running and leaping all over the stage oh. and I was shouting it to the top of my lungs. Hallelujah. And then I woke up and I couldn't wait to share the dream with Karen. Well, <laughs> that was my confirmation, knowing this is your word. Yeah. The Lord is telling you this. He's giving you the promise. It will be just as he has said it will be, just like it was for the Apostle Paul. Yeah. But also, he's giving you this word that there's going to be a day. And I believe Pam's dream is a promise to you and me that we are very close to being able to stand up Basically, because Pam, you stood up on a stage, which means yes. it's like, we're going to decree to the world. All these front porch friends, Pam, come on. Come on. Yes. I'm talking to all Hallelujah. my front porch friends. That yes. Those of us contending for the return of our prodigal sons and daughters. Oh, those of Jesus. us contending yes. for the restoration of our marriages. Oh, those of us contending for healing in our bodies. Yes, those Lord. of us contending Jesus. for a financial breakthrough for our yes. ministries. Yes. Those, we're gonna, we are this close, y'all. We are yes. this close to being able to stand up to our friends, to our family, to the world God's Ooh. given us. And we're going to shout yeah. it. Let's shout it together. It was as God. Is that what it was? It was just Okay, let's say it together. Said. Me and Pam's going to say it. Y'all sat with us. Ready? One, two, three. It, it was just as, as God has said. said. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes, That's Lord. That's what we're going to do. You just start saying it over and over. It yes. was just as God has said. Yes. That is the word of the Lord telling you the time is at hand. Yes. I know in the moment you may be saying it will be. Go ahead and just start saying it by faith. It was. It was. It that. was. It was. Yes. Because God has done it. Hallelujah. 
I want you to write it down on a card this week. I want you to write down. You can write it down right now. If you're still in the place of believing, it will be just as God has said. For some of you put, it was just as God has said. Put that card on your mirror in the bathroom when you put your makeup on. Put it on the steering wheel of your car. Put it on the refrigerator in the kitchen. Come on. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you got to wear it in a coat hanger, wrap it around your head and put the <laughs> card in front of your face. Come on. Whatever yes. it takes to believe it. Yes. Because we do believe it. Pam. We believe this word, don't we, We believe honey? it. Yes, we do. Every amen. bit of it. Yes, and amen. We believe what he said, not what we see. We believe what he said. Yes. Father, Pam, agree with me, hon. Would yes. you do that right now? Stretch for my precious friends. Father, in Jesus' name, Pam and I agree. Yes. We stand in faith as intercessors. Yes. Those of us that stand on the front porch of intercession, yes. in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, I pray for my front porch friends. Pam and I agree. That their prodigals are coming home. Yes. Their children are being awakened. Come on. Dry bones are going to live again. Jesus. Even what Jesus. looks very dry. Jesus. Ezekiel said they're very dry. Uh, come on. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. <clears throat> wind of God. Blow over these dry bones that they oh, will live yes. again. Hallelujah. Give Hallelujah. them ears to hear the word of God. Lord, I pray right now that you will speak to the prodigal that the scales fall from their eyes today in Jesus' name. They're coming home. They're coming home because it will be as God has said. Come on, you start saying that. My daughter's coming home because it will be as God has said. My son is coming home because it will be as God has said. It will not be as they said and he said and she said and that. No, it will be as God has said. It will be as God has said. It will be as God has said in Jesus' name. Father, go get them today. It's delivering the marriage, Amen. delivering in the home, deliverance in the home, Hallelujah. deliverance for the body. Yes, in yes. Jesus' mighty name, let this be the that. day of the breakthrough. Yes, Father, Lord. in the middle of the storm, strengthen my friends, oh, strengthen our friends with encouragement. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Come on, my friend. Be encouraged, honey. Be encouraged. Be encouraged like Paul said. It's going to be as God has said. All right? So you comment below. And let me hear from you. And uh, I'll have to share those with you, Pam, whatever oh, they say, too. I know it. I want to hear all of it. Everyone. And uh, so you comment below. Let us hear what you are hearing from the Lord. And let us hear what you need from the Lord so that we can stand in agreement with you. My friend, you're not alone. They're not alone, are they, Pam? They're not alone. They need to even make a microphone. Ooh. They need to start declaring it now. Something, if you have a microphone I or a love makeshift that. microphone. Pam, I love that. Yeah. I've used a hairbrush before. There you go. Is that a microphone? <laughs> and just, Pam, I love that. Just go yes. start decreeing it. Hallelujah. Come I'm going to go get one right now. Go Hang get on. one right now. I know now. I'm over time, but look here. I got, I got a, I got a, oh, I got a microphone right here. Let me get it. Look, right here, I got a remote control for my TV. There That's you one. Go. That's Come on, great. we just decree yes. it right now. Go yes. get you a microphone. Start walking yes. through your house. <laughs> I'm going to get a flashlight. There's a flashlight. You just get your microphone. I turn it around. It looks more like one. And start walking around your house and yes. just start decreeing. Let's do it again. It will be as God has said it will be. Not say it was. It was as God has said it will be. So you go get your microphone. Decree it all over your house today. You're not alone, my friend. We love you so much. And I will see you next week. So until then, keep your eyes on the road. In Jesus' name. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.